has been good, but all good things must come to an end sometimes. So uh, I'm going to conclude this, this series today in, in, in relationship to Purim. And I hope you, you really listen to what Messiah has, has told us in this awesome chapter of Yohanan 15. This, this entire series is, is based on John Yohanan 15. Now I want to start uh, maybe with a word, of, a word of prayer. Would you join me? Avinu Shebashemayim. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Increase our joy today. Increase our joy in Purim. Increase our joy today, Lord, so we can, can show this joy to the world, Abba. Abba, every place today that we are being bogged down, weighed down, if it's physical, if it's emotional, if it's spiritual, fatigue, Abba, I ask that you just breathe life into us today. Hashem Yeshua Meshichin. Amen. In these days, especially this week, it's kind of difficult to be joyful about much, right? Especially this week. I think all of us saw the pictures from Japan. And I got to tell you something on a side note. Tuesday night with a prayer meeting, it was outstanding. We had about 20, 25 people here or something like that. And I really believe God was moving in the most powerful and spiritual way. And I just realized when more of us come together to something like prayer, God is moving. It's not that there are two or more. Yeah, he said two or more, but if there are two people who are aiming at God and there are 30 people who are aiming at God, what do you think is more powerful? The 30 who are aiming at God. It was just amazing. And we can't wait to do it again. But when we came together, we prayed. Uh, one of the focus prayers was for what's happening in Japan. And I think everybody been watching the picture from Japan this week and the destruction and the chaos in this country. It's very difficult to be joyful about this. If I, I could not sleep. All what I have is the CNN going on, the Communist Network News showing the picture. But no, all kidding, you watch the picture and you cannot believe it. And you ask the question, is that the West Coast is next? You know, as a matter of fact, Israel postponed their, they, they had a plans to build in the Negev a nuclear reactor. Benjamin Netanyahu came immediately and said, uh-uh, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're, we're putting all of this on hold until we understand what's really happened there. In addition to what happened in Japan, I don't know if everybody seen it, but they had this horrible murder in Israel of the Fogel family, and specifically Rabbi Fogel, where a man, I was contemplating showing you the images, they actually did, but I decided that I read or not, where a man walked into their house of Rabbi Fogel at 30, he's exactly... I saw me kind of in him because he's exactly my age. He's 36, 35 years old. He's my age with a beautiful family. And this terrorist, that's what he is, walk in and took a knife and stab and stab him and stab him and stab him and stab him his wife and stab a three-month-old baby. Can you imagine what hate you have to do to, to be doing something like that? They brought to the head of the, the, the synagogue, you know, I listened to the eulogy on the Israeli channel, channel, and they brought one of the kids survived. And she's a 12 years old. She brought me to tears. She said, nobody will move us to the land that God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob promised, promised us. This is a 12 years old speaking. And she was weeping. Can you imagine? 
Can you imagine what they have given up? And I'm looking at all of this news, and I know the rabbi said that we are commanded, and Yeshua, as we saw in lesson one, commanded us to be in joy. And I said, I cannot really be all that joyful this week. There's really not a whole lot to be joyful about. I cannot have a simcha in Adar. It's been a black month for humanity, for the Jewish people. It's hard to us sometimes to find the simcha. And when I am depressed, what do you do when you're depressed? Eat? <laughs> no, I'm talking did, 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 when I, I'm really, I was really depressed on Wednesday night. Wednesday night. I was so depressed because I had a sore throat on top of this and watching the scene. And it was 2.30 in the morning. I did not even have my sermon down for the week. I said, God, I'm really depressed because I, here I am giving a series about the joy of the Lord is our strength. And this is depressing. What am I going to say to the synagogue this week? And I turned. God said, start reading the Megillah. The book of Esther. I hope all of you read it in, in your home. So I read chapter 1, 2, 3. And then I got to this verse, this scripture. From the book of Esther, chapter 9. In the end of it. And I want to talk to you a little bit about this. It says this. The days where the Jews had rested, or had rest from their enemies. And the month which turn unto them from sorrow to gladness, and from mourning into a good day, that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, and of sending portions one to another, and gifts to the poor. And I tell you something, when I read this verse, I was encouraged, but I said, I can't wait for the day when Messiah return. Okay, and as I read this verse, it's the, the, it says here, the, the day where Israel, the Jews, were arrested from the enemies. And I said, I cannot wait for the day the Jews will rest from their enemy. And just this expectation of this day when Messiah come, and all of the Israeli enemies will be perished. They will come to the Lord or will they perish? They'll have a choice. This will be a day that will turn the mourning that we are experiencing to a great joy. You see, this picture here in the book of Esther is a picture of the time to come. A day of sorrowfulness will turn to a day of joyfulness. A day of cries will turn to a day of laughter. And when I write this verse, I say, hey, things are looking pretty bleak right now. But there will be a day, it's not always going to be bleak. There will be a time where the days of mourning, just like the time of Esther, will turn to the days of joy. Yes, we have to believe that. In week one, just to remind you, we talked about the first step of Simcha. And do you remember what was the first step of Simcha was, according to Yohanan 15? It was, according to Messiah himself, himself, was to let him into and ask him to come into, into you, your house. He said, you should ask as he knocking on the door. Revelation 3 says to us, the Messiah is standing at the door. He is knocking and we are to welcome him. Yeshua went further on and said, you will not see me until you say Baruch HaBab Hashem Adonai. The past week, the last Shabbat, in lesson two, we spoke on how exactly we are to open the door for Messiah. Because he's standing outside. He's knocking. How are we to push the door open? Okay? And in order for the joy to be complete in him. And we saw that Yeshua spoke about, he gave us this strange mitzvah, which he equated himself to the Ten Commandments. And this mitzvah, if you recall, is called Pikuach Nefesh. It's a very interesting in, in the mitzvah. And we saw even in the Talmud, it says that pikuach nefesh, pikuach nefesh, take precedence over the Torah itself. And what is pikuach nefesh? Is willing to risk your own life in order for somebody else. 
to see the light. And we saw the parallel of the book of Esther. How by you doing a pikuach nefesh, remember Esther did a pikuach nefesh when she said, if I perish, I perish, and if I die, I die. Remember that? She did a pikuach nefesh. She put her life first. And in the end of the book, there was great joy. You see, when pikuach nefesh occurred, great joy coming. Messiah did pikuach nefesh. He gave his life for us so we can have joy. And we also saw what happened when we do Pikuach Nefesh. We are the one of getting filled in joy, and the world also is getting joy, filled with joy. So today, in the last of this was all recap, I cannot give the sermons again. You know, you, I realized something in six years that I've been a rabbi in the synagogue. Now, you might differ from, don't agree with it. I have never given the same message twice. Now, maybe you think I say the same thing. Maybe I say the same But it was never given. Pro- and I was close to do giving a message I gave four years ago. And God said, uh-uh, don't do it. New, new. I want you every time to give something new. Don't ever give something old. So in this last step today, in Purim, in this series, the joy of the Lord is my strength, I want to talk to you about how are we to increase, not decrease, increase the simcha in your life. Once you open the door to Messiah, maybe you have gone to Pikuach Nefesh on a daily basis. More specifically, I ask the question, why is it that so many believers all over the world, no, no doubt of it, love the Lord, with all of their hearts, yet do not have the complete joy that he promises. Didn't he say in the word that, that we are to welcome him so our joy will be what? Complete. So how come, if that's what Messiah said, so many people walk with incomplete joy in their life? So many times I cannot distinguish between the believers and the non-believers. They act in the same from a level of joy. You cannot make a difference. So there's two options here. Either Messiah is a liar, God forbid, or there's something else here that we must have overlooked. Okay? Because he has promised us a complete joy. So the million dollar question is, okay, we know he's Lord. We open the door to him. We right prayer. We say the right words. We might even give ourselves to some more people, give pikuach nefesh. But how do we rejoice in him? What does it mean to rejoice in the Messiah? What does it mean to rejoice in him? Well, I explained to you already last week that the word in Hebrew for joy is the word what? Simcha. Simcha. And the word simcha, what is it to the root law word of the word simcha or ismach? It's exactly the same word as the word Mashiach. Simcha and Mashiach is the same Hebraic word. You think about the word Mashiach, you think about Redeemer. But the word Mashiach is from the word simcha, which means joy. In essence, what Yeshua is telling us here in Yohanan 15 is that we can have the Messiah and not to have the joy of God. Okay, let me say it again. If you have the Messiah, you must, a priori, have the joy of God. So, the question becomes today, how can I have more of him and know more of him, so I have this complete joy. Now, we read something interesting here in the end of the story of Megillah. I read you this great one. There were the days where the Jews rested from the enemies and the month which turned them from sorrow into gladness and from mourning into a good day that they should make them days of faith feasting and gladness. And sending portion one to another and gifts to the poor. Does something strike you in this verse as out of order, friends? Something way, way, way out of order? 
The thing that struck me out of order in this verse, that he said that they are to send portions to one another. Why is it that it is out of order? It does not, first of all, it does not state in this, the text here that they are to send portion. But either in the Hebrew is the word manot, mishloach manot, is portions. Okay? It's a plural word. What on earth the day that God saved his people and gave a victory people have to do with giving portions to one another? Wouldn't you expect in this kind of day to have a burnt offering? Maybe to the Lord? Maybe a thanksgiving offering to the Lord? Praising the Lord? No. Instead of that, what do they do? They're giving gifts to one another. Are you guys following me? This is a good day, according to the scripture, that God has saved all of Israel. And what did the Israelis doing here? Giving gifts to one another. And those gifts call in Hebrew, Bishloach Manot. In essence, what it's saying, the scripture, instead of praising God, they're giving each other high fives. Why would you give each other one high five when this is a day God has saved you? Are you guys following here the, the strangeness of the scriptures, guys? And why is it, let us ask this second question, why is it that the joy, wasn't it enough that God has saved them, guys? Wouldn't that be sufficient, friends? It should have been sufficient. But what is it? why is it that the joy is not enough that they had to give each other gifts? Do you notice something about Jewish people, friends? You will never see a Jewish person go to another Jewish person's house for a Shabbat meal, as an example, empty-handed. It's against Jewish ethics. If you come to some, somewhere to Shabbat, Shabbat meal, you always bring something. The moral of this sermon, don't show up to my house empty-handed. Let's go eat. No, we're not done yet. Don't come empty-handed to my house. And I do like red meat. I even remember one time, somebody came to my house. All kidding aside. Somebody came to a Shabbat meal in my house. <laughs> People are funny. And he brought me a gift. Well, you know, we had a full table filled with gifts, you know, uh, no, no, food. Okay? Well, we didn't eat his, what he brought. Okay? Then 30 minutes later, after they left, they said, hey, we didn't eat what we brought. Can we come back and take it since we didn't use it? Don't do that. Don't do that either. People are very strange and funny. Don't come empty-handed, and if you come, leave it. Goodness. It's nobody here in the room. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me get back to the point of this Midrash. In the context of what we are studying, which is from Yohanan, John 15. And today I'm going to conclude it as Yeshua delivered that punchline on this issue of joy. He said in the 16th verse, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. And slow so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Yeshua delivered the biggest punchline in this verse. You see, he said to us two Shabbats ago, when we read two verses before that, he said to us that we are required to have a simcha. He says, if you are to follow me, you are to have simcha. You are to have joy. Amen? 
But he didn't say to us what is the goal of the Simcha yet. But here in this important word, he gives us the goal of the Simcha. And what is the goal of the Simcha of the believer? Huh? What is it? To bear fruit. To bear fruit. You are to have Simcha so that you bear fruit. You see the cause and effect that you, you are giving us. Let's talk about cause and effect. Going now three weeks. If you get this message, it will change your life. Step one, two Shabbats ago, Yeshua tell us that the Torah, you remember he talked about the mitzvot, the Torah will lead us to what? If Torah is exercised correctly, it will lead us to simcha. And what he's saying today is the simcha will lead us to bear fruit. Amen? Let's just say it again. Torah exercised correctly will lead us to have joy in our life. A joy in the simcha will lead us to bear fruit. What a statement by Messiah. What an explanation by Messiah. Even when you do Torah, if it does not lead you to simcha, it does not lead you to f- fruit, you miss the point. We learn something really important here with, from Messiah. This is why we're taking the last three weeks to talk about it. Without the simcha, why well, say this is, this is a commandment that is equivalent to the ten words, to the ten commandments, he equated them. Without simcha, there is no fruitfulness. But with his complete simcha, or with, when he said the, the word complete, now you have to understand the word complete means more, abundance. The more simcha we have, the more fruitfulness we have. It's a one-to-one correlation. The more joy we have, the more fruit we're going to bear. It's as simple as that. And he said, there is no other goal for you today than to bear fruit. Hallelujah. This is your goal, to bear fruit. Now, how many of you like to garden? Gardeners. Like garden? Come anytime to my house. Feel free. Garden away. I have all the tools. You know, I'm one of those people. I have all the bells and whistles. I have all the tools. I don't know what they do, half of them. James is not here. The other week, a couple of months ago, we found a snake. What do you think I do? I call James. James, I have a snake. Come take care of it. You take the snake, love your neighbor as yourself, throw it over the, f- the fence to the. <laughs> you say it's a garden snake. They'll thank you later. Love your neighbor as yourself. Oh boy, I said, that's really very loving to our neighbors. Maybe there's a reason we haven't heard from them since then. (laughs) Uh, I don't like gardening. I don't like getting my fingernails on with the dirt. But let me ask you a question. You know why I don't like gardening? I realize what it is. When I was in my youth, I lived in a kibbutz for a portion of my life. And my grandfather, when he came to Israel, he bought three acres and he planted every tree known to man. His backyard, if I'll show you a picture, it's like paradise. You name it, there is there. Prasimen, avocado, uh, pecan, uh, something you don't have, papayas. Um, every tree... Every fruit is there. And who guess who had to take care of all of this? My grandfather said, if you don't help, you don't eat. That's the rule. So I I was a caretaker of all all of those trees. And then later on, when I lived in a kibbutz, what do you do in a kibbutz? You go to school, and you come to school, you eat burnt rice, and then you go... And you work. So I work so much all my life in this stuff. I'm allergic to it. I'm just allergic. And by the way, I'm allergic to the outdoors here in Texas. They have all these pollens and stuff in the air. 
you know. But what is the gardener hate the most? I remember I was about 15 years old. I was living in a kibbutz. And the kibbutz was right there next to what they call the West Bank today. You know, the term the West Bank doesn't exist. And the kibbutz had a huge groves of oranges. And my job was from 10 p.m. till 2 a.m. in the morning to patrol it because the Palestinians were coming and they were stealing oranges. And they were cutting it. And I mean, just taking pounds, hundreds of pounds worth of oranges. And boy, one time we came and we found this big block that they cut it with the scissors. And boy, they took hundreds of pounds worth of oranges. And there is nothing in the morning the my person who was responsible for me find out. And they will leave it. You see, there is nothing a gardener hates them more than a stolen fruit. Isn't that true? Those of you who are really gardening for fruit trees. Don't you hate them when people go and pick your own fruit? Yes? Or you like it? You like it? No, this is a stranger. This is even your enemy. Going and picking your own fruit that you labor towards. Uh-uh. A gardener hates it. However, in the book of Esther here, and you're going to see how it's all connected now to what Yeshua said and all of these things, it says that we are to make portions. Amen? Didn't he say that we are to make a portions? Portions. In this day that we should exalt God, he said to make a portions. Here's what a portion looks like. In Israel, you give those portions, okay? This is, this is a portion. We make those, okay? And what you put inside the portion is traditionally in Israel, you put your fruit. And specifically the fruit that is from your own trees, from your own garden. This is traditionally what they do. They put a, a tree, a, a fruit that is from your own trees. Not just any fruit. You are to put the best fruit inside the Mishlochei in Manot. And you are to give it to your neighbor. You are to give it to the poor. And you are to do it at free will. Here in the book of Esther, we read that the people symbolically took the provision of God, what God is giving, the provision of God, and gave it to others to make the joy complete of all of Israel. They took whatever God is giving them. It's a symbolically not of just of the physical or the spiritual things. And they have given it to others. That's what the Torah, that's what the portion says. That's what the book of Esther said. And that's why we make those today. Those are just not representing amen here. They are representing the provision that God has given us. The spiritual and the physical blessings. And look what the text says in Esther 9.22. It says, Israel was not all, the joy was not satisfied until all of the people had this. They share the provision. They share the blessings. The joy, friends, what the book of Esther is teaching us, and you see that Yeshua said this, the same words here. The joy is not complete until all of Israel is saved. The joy is not complete until every Jewish soul is getting satisfied. The joy is not complete until the neighbor across the street, your son, your daughter, your uncle, your aunt, your father, your mother, heard the good news. The joy is not complete. This idea that we are willing to take our own personal gifts from the Lord, what God is giving us, and share it with others, is the exact idea that Yeshua Messiah talking about it. When Yeshua said that the entire Torah is resting on the Shema, and the Ve'ahavta, he was correct. Please let us look carefully 
at what Yeshua is saying is his ear. I hopefully you start to see the connection between Purim now to what Yeshua talking about with the fruitfulness and the fruit. You said you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might bear fruit. Fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in me, in my name, the Father will give you. I want us to look for a second carefully at the word of the Master from Yohanan 15. Messiah said here he, that he has chosen us. He has not appointed us. The word does not say he appointed us. Scratch out this word. He said that he commanded us. There is a difference between say, hey, it would be nice for you to go bear some fruit. He commanded the believers, commanded us to bear some fruit. Fruit, it is equivalent, the word Yifkadeti, you know the Torah portion, Pekuda, commandment. The Hebrew word in the Delich is the word Efkadeti. It's like a military commandment to go and make fruit. Think about King Messiah as our military commander. Is he our military commander? Commanding us, equivalent to the Ten Commandments, as we see as he quoting the words from the Ten Commandments, the equivalent to the Ten Commandments said, now you go and make fruit. There is no other greater commandment than this. Often we feel that all the fruit is being produced by God. Yes? God is the one who produced fruit. But Yeshua here is stating something that is completely opposite to that. He said that we are the one who produced the fruit. We are the one producing this. It's not going to grow from the heavenlies, friends. Hey, don't look at this and say, oh, we want, we want to be fruitful, so God help us to be fruitful. No, the fruit is something that you labor to make. A fruit is something that you are laboring to make. The fruit is made by this end. Those of you who have been in gardening, you know that you are the one who planted this. Yeah, God is the one who brought the rain. But who is the one who did the work? Hey. Hey, friends, it's you and I. Yeshua said here, I give you commandment. And by the way, would he have given us this commandment if there is no hope for us to be successful in this? No, it's when he's not a just God. But he is a just Lord. And he's saying, I have given you a commandment to produce fruit. And this commandment is the greatest commandment I can give you right now. I was so encouraged and moved this week. On Thursday, I saw so many women, or I heard so many women coming here to the shul to make those mishlochem anot that will go to the hands of unsaved Israelis. They will go. Some of them already went. Some of this will go. Will go today. They will go to the hands of unsaved people. And we say, this is our provision. Have our provision. We want to tell you about the God of Israel. So our joy will be complete. You start seeing it? So much different than it's all about me and about... No, our joy is not complete until you come to faith. Until you come to faith. I was so encouraged to see so many women coming here and doing... This is Purim! Mishlochem not to take the mitzvah, do what God commands us to do. And taking our own personal joy and blessing, and putting it into actions. You see what this is representing? This representing the fruit. This representing the action. I know some of the women even here, I know she don't like to pick up, what is your birthday, Evelyn? Evelyn gave up her own birthday to come and do mitzvah, to be here. You know what? I, I want to clap for that, you know? This is exciting for me. That means that the joy of the Lord going out is more important than your own self. What are awesome things. You guys getting excited about it? You start seeing what Yeshua is talking about here, about the fruit. And I know nobody wants to depart from their precious fruit, especially after you labor so hard. But Messiah said, open your palm. Let it 
let it go. Give it away. I want you to think about it. Our chief commander. What happened if Obama come here and give a chief commandment? We all have to follow. It's the law. Well, our chief commander, Yeshua HaMashiach, is not telling us. He commanding us in verse 16 to make fruit. To make fruit. To make fruit. Because this fruit is a representation of your simcha. By the way, he does not say, and I want you to think about this, that the fruit that we will create will last. This is a totally paganistic, and it is not an Hebraic thought, of what Yeshua said to us. Somehow, there's this idea in the world that if you do a mitzvah once, you've done it for your lifetime. I had a funny conversation this week with a friend. It's a pastor. And, uh, and he asked, uh, we talked um, about Passover. So, uh, so I asked him, so, so tell me, are you, are you guys doing Passover in your church? He said, well, we've done it once. We've, we've done it once. We've done it. We, we know all about this. I asked him, have you ever done Shabbat? He said, I, I attended Shabbat once. I've done it. Okay? Been there, done that. But Yeshua stand here, standing here. Look at the word of the master. Look at what the master said. Yeshua saying that the fruit will be not last. The fruit will be raised up. Okay? But once the fruit is raised up, look at the text, friend. How this is going to raise up? Through the work of our hand and through the help of the Ruach HaKodesh. But once it is raised up, Okay, the fruit is there. Who has the responsibility to keep it up? Who has the responsibility to go to the garden and check and make sure that nothing bad is going to come and destroy it? The fruit. It's you and I, friends. This is not the responsibility of God to guard our own heart. It is our responsibility. Obviously, it is our responsibility. On the contrary, what Yeshua said, once the fruit is raised up, it is your and I responsibility to out-mitzvah out each other as his own Talmudim. See, we need to start to do some things. Maybe we start a mitzvah competition. Each person gets a star for every mitzvah that they are doing. And we can start out-mitzvah each other. Yeshua is a Jewish rabbi. He said, you want the joy to be complete? You start out mitzvah one another. Keep it up. Keep it up. Raise it up. Keep it up. You know? You know this song? Keep it up. Raise it up. You don't know, you don't know rap music? I don't know it. I just made it up. I don't know. Keep it up. Raise it up. I will lift it. But once I give it to you through the Holy Spirit, are you going to do some more? Or are you just going to say, been there, done that? Bye-bye. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. In order for our joy, remember when I started, I said, how are we going to lift up our joy level? It's by taking the joy to the world. In order for the joy to be complete, the fruit must be taken out. Can we say it together? The fruit must be Taken out. Mishlochei Manot must be taken out to a starving world. How many of you know that there is a starving world out there? The message cannot stay in this building. The message cannot stay in Fort Worth. The message has to go to the world. And if we are not doing it, we are not going to have the complete joy. The complete joy will happen only when Israel will be saved. Messiah said, Messiah said, Matthew 7, by their fruit, you will recognize them. We start to see the connection to John 15 here. Have you ever stopped and think, what does it mean for the fruit to be recognized, friends? You should say, by their fruit, you will recognize them. A fruit is recognized where it is taken, friends. A fruit can be staying in the garden and it is not recognized because it's not taken anywhere. 
Oh, I have a very nice tree in my backyard. Oh, yeah, prove it to me. I never tasted the fruit. I don't care about this. The world say, I want to taste it. I want to taste it today. Don't tell me about it. Let me taste it. A fruit will be recognized where it is taken, brothers. It does not have to be necessarily FYI. This is important. This is important because it's tying all of it together. It does not have to be necessarily a good fruit. You see, Yeshua talked equally about bad fruit. You realize that? He's talking a lot about bad fruit. And guess what? Bad fruit also is being recognized, can be recognized. Not just good fruit. Do you think only good fruit can be recognized? Bad fruit can be recognized as well. The question that we need to ask ourselves today is what type of fruit we want the people to recognize us by. by. They're going to recognize us. But they're going to recognize us either by good fruit or bad fruit. What kind of fruit do you want today? People recognize you when they think about you. When they say, Rabbi Shapira, oh yeah. I want them to think something good. Not because who I am. Because who I, I represent. Let's take it further. When people think about Messianic Judaism, what do you want Messianic Judaism to be associated with? A good fruit? They say, all those Messianics, they are zealots. They are Torah lovers, mitzvot lovers. They're always there to help. Even yesterday, you know, Arthur took a... a, a Amen ears to the malls in Waco. So here's Arthur. He's calling me. Tell him about Yeshua. I'm not going to do that. But I talked to this guy, this Israeli guy named Mike. Say, he said, I, I can't tell you what it means to me that you brought this amen here. This little mishloch manna. I cannot thank you enough. And now I talked to the girl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You don't know what it means. What have we done? We just took a simple, simple thing to them. Simple thing. You see, the things we do matter. They matter for the kingdom. And do we want as Messianic Jews to people to say, oh, they recognize our fruit all right. You know, they recognize our fruit because our fruit is there. You see, because the fruit is something that is irrefutable, friends. You cannot refute a fruit. You cannot refute a fruit. You can refute other things. What is it that we want the world to to recognize Messianic Judaism as? Good fruit or bad fruit? Yeshua here talking, obviously he's talking about the fruit that makes the world a better place to be. When I want people, when they think about me, when they think about Yeshua, when they think about Messianic Judaism, to associate it with a good fruit. Not bad. So what is this fruit? You think this fruit is just just something spiritual always? No. No. Yeshua, tell us what this fruit is. You remember when I told you we need to out mitzvah one another? Some of you look at it, oh, you're being legalistic, you're probably thinking. Oh, you pre- no, listen to what it says in Ephesians. For the fruit of the light, of the light, not a light, the light. The light of who? The light of Yeshua. The fruit of the light consists of all goodness, sedaka, and truth. The real fruit that will make our job complete, friends, that will make our joy complete as we take the man Mishloch Manot is Tzedakah. It's Tzedakah. Says, Yeshua says that when you out mitzvah your neighbor, your joy will be complete. How about that? Your joy will be complete. Have nothing to do with your circumstances. It have nothing even to do with you opening the door. That's step one. Or doing a pikuach nefesh. It's you putting this things into action. When you do those things, your joy will be complete. Only when your brother received 
the spiritual mishloach manot, your joy will be complete. Cognizantly, you understand, guys? If we are messianic believers, we have to stay true to our master. We must take the spiritual mishloachem manot out to the world, to any person who is hungry and thirsty. Somebody might say today, when the second, am I, are you not talking about good deeds? Basically. And I say today that there is a huge difference between good deeds and tzedakah. Two people can make the same mishloach manot. There's nothing magical or unique about this. Two people can, give me one more. Give me one more of those for my office. Give me one more. Quickly, quickly, David. Give me one more, and I, maybe I'll illustrate this to you. Let's pretend they're the same color. Okay, Mark, open your hand. I'll give you one Mishloch Manot. Mark, open your hand. I'll give you one Mishloch Manot. This Mishloch Manot, I say I give it to you in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, our Lord and Savior, who love you. Do you say I give it to you because I like you? Do you see the difference, friends? One Mishloch Manot has given in the name of Yeshua. One Mishloch Manot is giving just because I like you. Do you see the difference? Do you hear the difference? One Mishloch Manot is giving under the name, above all name, Yeshua, our Messiah. Matter of fact, whatever we do when we out mitzvah, our neighbors, we must do in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Listen to, to what the Lord is saying in Philippians 1. Feel, filled with the fruit, what fruit do you think you're going to say? The fruit of tzedakah. Tzedakah is a physical thing. I love this verse. Filled with the fruit of tzedakah that comes through who? Sure, it's come through me. That comes through my neighbor. No, that come through Yeshua HaMashiach to the glory and praise of Hashem. See what he's saying here? He's saying that your joy is complete when you take this package. They say, I give it to you in the name of our Master. Oh, glory to Him that I can share with you today. Then there is a real tzedakah and a real mitzvah. That is taking. You see, I think this is a transformational year for the synagogue. We are in a fork and we decide. A lot of people want to be called messianic. But they don't want to do anything that remote the Messiah. Resemble the Messiah. The things that resemble the Messiah is taking the fruit out to the world. There is nothing more messianic than taking the word out to the people. I want to close with this as we complete this series from Proverbs 11. It says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and the one who is wise saves lives. Friends, what we're dealing here with today, and maybe it will give you a different perspective. Are we getting here together to pray or in Shabbat to praise the king or on Thursday to make a hamantashins just because we are bored and we have nothing else better to do? No, we all have better things to do. We're getting here together because we believe that we are in the business of saving lives. How many of you want to be a lifesaver to somebody today? Stand up today. And I just want to pray. God has called us to be lifesavers. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are such a good and awesome and kind and righteous God. Your words are never returned, null and void. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, Lord. We ask today, Abba, that our joy will be complete as we are taken out to the world. The Mishlochei Manot, Lord. 
And we say the joy is not complete until all of Israel will be saved. So Abba, hasten this time. Use us for this season. Use us for this time. I pray blessing over and all the Mishluchem, not that will be given today. The one that will be given tonight. In the name of Yeshua, Lord, we pray for the salvation of all who receive it. In the name of Yeshua, we give those in the, under the name of Yeshua. Bless those. Lord, help the synagogue not to hold back on the gifts you have given us. Help us not to hold back on nothing physically or spiritually that you have given us. Lord, we want to be generous with our Mishlochem Manot. We want to learn to be out mitzvah, to be mitzvah, mitzvah up. In the name of Yeshua, for your name, not for our own glory. We do not need the work of the flesh, but for your glory, Lord. Abba, we ask that our joy will be increasing as a synagogue, abundantly. Help us today to ask, first and foremost, to you to come in into us. And may the joy be transferred to those who need you through us. Abba, help us to give. Even if there is something that we don't know that we have, help us to give all that is in us to our brothers. I ask this, Abba, in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. Remain standing for the ironic benediction. Yevrecha Adonai Veishmarecha Yaher Adonai Panavichunecha Isa Adonai Panavelecha Veyasem Lecha Shalom May there be peace upon us and upon of Israel. And we all say Amen. And I want to say something.